Welcome to the story behind the story, folks. My name is Sierra Melker. I'm the founder of Red Thread Publishing. This podcast is dedicated to female authors hearing about their triumphs, their tribulations, and supporting all of the other women in the world who have a story to tell, who are aspiring publishing future authors. Today, we're joined by Catherine Ramsland, amazing author, 68 books, yes. and, and many more um, articles crossing several genres, but mostly in your field of forensic psychology. Introduce yourself. Thank you for joining us. I can't wait for this conversation. Well, <clears throat> I'm Catherine Ramson. I teach forensic psychology and, and primarily I would say I'm a writer because I've been writing for about 35 years um, with 68 books and four more on the way, yes. at least. <laughs> <laughs> also became an executive producer. Um, I'm doing an A&E four part special on one of my books. And then also I'm a co-executive producer for Murder House Flip. So that's a little bit different, but still involved a lot of writing and a lot of work. Um, <clears throat> so I'm really excited about all the different opportunities I've had as a writer. And certainly it's been um, mostly circuitous and serendipitous that in that opportunities came my way. And I always had prepared myself to be able to jump on them and move forward. Mm -hmm. Even if I wasn't entirely sure I could do it, I said yes and did it. And, and as a result, more opportunities came my way. So I was very, that has really been what defines my writing career and why I've changed from one to another to another. But primarily now I write in the field of forensics. And I, I love that. I think it's so important actually for all aspects of life, but very true in, in the writing and publishing world is, I mean, you have to say, if, if you think that you want to write, then you have to say yes to that. And then if you want to publish, you have to say yes to that. And I, I love, we've been talking a lot in our community about the impact of our writing. Um, the impact that it's going to have on our readers, on the world, on ourselves. We start with a vision. We think we know where we're headed, but guaranteed we're going to end up somewhere else, especially if we're open to it, like you said. Um, could, wouldn't have gotten to this end point if this had been your goal, but that being willing to, to move. And I think jumping, um, saying yes to things, even if you're not sure you can do it, because you probably can't do it now, but that's the whole point that you could, you'll do it once you've tried, right? Um, I think so. I think um, for me, writing is more like I can't say no to it. It's, it's a very <laughs> persistent kind of thing. And I've been writing since I was a kid. I wrote, when I was 15, I wrote a thousand page novel by oh hand <laughs> so, that I only showed to two people. But, um, you know, it's there, it's persisting. And, but I think it's also true that there are people who really want to write, but have doubts um, and, and those doubts can really get in their way. Yeah, yeah. I, in a little bit, I want to ask you about your encouragement, tips and advice on that. Um, but before we do that, I'm really curious um, both where your interest in forensics came from um, and then to write 68 books, there is a fiery passion, unstoppable <laughs> writer in there, which you just referred to. Um, and I know that once you get the ball rolling, once you're like, oh, I'm a writer. Oh, I can publish books. It's not, the first one's usually the hardest, but, but 68 books, that's, that's still an, an incredible accomplishment. So talk to us about your interest in forensics in general and, and how so many books have been born. I think of every book like a baby. So um. I'll first say it did take me some time to be able to say I'm a writer. I, would, I could always say I, I write, yes. but I didn't define myself as a writer until I'd have to say probably a dozen books in that I realized I am a writer <laughs> I'm gonna keep going with this. Because certainly I think every writer faces this unless they're a mega bestseller, they, they face 
uh, impasses in their career and ups and downs and, and the possibility that it's over at any yeah. given time. And I have, and I've had to reinvent in order to keep going. But the forensics actually came in a very odd way. And it was a serial killer in my hometown when I was a kid, mm -hmm. before the phrase serial killer was even used. Yeah. And I, I paid a lot of attention to it. Um, at the time they did catch him. Um, he was killing co, you know, co-eds yeah, and, and even girls younger. Mm -hmm. So I was attuned to that. Yeah. But then I went up and did philosophy and you know, other, other kinds of things. I traveled around the country on my own hitchhiking, you know, so I had adventures, but then um, came back into writing about forensics because I had, as the internet was getting going, um, there was a small website writing about serial killers. So I said, oh, I'll, write, I'll write you the story about the serial killer from my town. Yeah. And that led to another and another. And then all of a sudden Court TV picked up this website, bought him out, and then I was writing for Court TV. Yeah. So like, <laughs> out of the blue and then many of the articles I wrote for them on forensic science and psychology led into books like the forensic science of CSI, the forensic yeah. psychology of criminal minds. So all these very commercial types of books came my way because I was visible on the internet and um, I could write fast. That's great. Um, and you, you have a couple of other books um, in particular Snap and um, another book about writing. You want to share about those? Those, those are the ones. Those are the ones that I'm getting really excited about. So I used to, like, I used to watch Criminal Minds and CSI religiously, and and now I'm I'm getting squeamish. I guess in my middle age, um, but yeah. I love the books about um, the writing process, and um, I'd I'd love to hear more about what you share in those and why you decided to write those. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, um, the first one, Bliss, uh, I think is the one you're referring yes. to, <laughs> which I write, wrote for the Writer's Digest Press, I believe. And that actually came about because I had been, I had just been through some surgery and they told me I wouldn't be able to do anything for four weeks. And I thought, watch me. <laughs> so I wrote that book. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you're not telling me that. So I wrote that <laughs> book and it was based partly on um, workshops I had been giving mm -hmm. because at the time I, I was being a therapist. I wasn't, a, I was a terrible therapist because I, I didn't have much patience, but I had, <laughs> like, I'm a voyeur, you know, not a therapist. Tell me yeah. some better stories this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we talked about that last week. Yeah. At least, at least I knew to move on and do something else because I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't effective, but it did arise out of workshops. I had been giving people on, um, you know, the Joseph Campbell idea and, and sure. you know, th there wasn't any real program for how do you do this? It was just follow your bliss. And no, that's not, it's not that simple because there are yeah. psychological inhibitors, there are facilitators, there are things you need to know about focus and concentration. So I wrote that book to give a program for the sense of bliss. And similarly, I wrote Snap as, and that was part of my reinvention phase that you know, my agent said, let's, let's try to think of something new. And I wrote that as a program for how to regularly generate sudden insight flashes of genius for yourself because too many people think this just comes out of nowhere and you never know when it's gonna hit. But so that you, can, no. you can yeah. actually set up your the conditions in your life to make it happen on a very regular basis and I do that um, so I put I put the not just my whole program into this book snap but also all the science to back up everything I was saying and so, that's my happy place that's like the the personal growth meets science um, so that we don't feel like oh I just have to sit around and wait for inspiration anything that's has neuroscience in the description. I'm like, oh yes. So yeah, and, and if your book is on its way to me. Um, right, if you do sit around and wait, it probably won't happen very often. But that's not the recipe of getting it, yeah. No, but there is a way to get it. And it actually kind of grew out of the book bliss because I already understood if you want to create the sense of flow where you mm -hmm. feel at one with your writing 
and you produce some of your best work in this almost semi-trance state, you have to set the conditions up for that to happen. And you can do it on where it really works for you every single day. And so that program helped me then design the one I did for, for SNAP. And it's pretty simple formula, but it's still a lot of work on your part. But that's it. That's, I mean, we read books to, to get the recipe, right? We still have to right. do the cooking, so to speak. Right. But, but if somebody's figured out how to do something, we're like, tell me, tell me. Yeah, and uh, in, in Bliss, I actually have a, like a workshop sort of flavor to it where you, you do get exercises and you can do it on your own or with a group. So um, the, you can do the same thing with Snap, but Snap is more of a personal insight generator. Yeah. <laughs> you have to figure out the things that work for you because different people have different experiences. I was just writing an article on this today. Um, Isaac Asimov would, whenever he came to an impasse in his work, would just go to a movie and bang, 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 because he had to relax the brain in order right. for the association cortex to start redoing all your ideas and putting these new combinations together. I personally go for walks. Other people ride by their bike or play tennis or play with their dog or take a shower Right. take a nap, you know. Well, and, and this comes up a lot actually in this kind of podcast and it's going to lead into my next question because it's like, what advice do you have for whatever, but what works for you might not work for somebody else, the actual thing, but the, the larger concept could, right? You've got to change, you've got to relax your brain. How do you relax your brain is different than how I relax my brain. So if somebody says, tell me to go to a movie, I'll go to a movie and it won't work. But if I know the larger concept, and so I really encourage all of our listeners and all of the women who, who write and publish with us, everyone in the community to figure out their own recipe, right? Absolutely. If we're just sort of blindly following other people's advice, we could be close, but missing what really works for us. Um, so I'm, I'm very excited to read both of those, SNAP um, in particular. Um, what, what advice, so I, I know, when, before I ever wrote a book, before I published, now I've published several and like you, I'm like, yeah, I'm writing three. Um, but I remember like writing one book feeling like an epic challenge. Um, you've written 60, forgotten how many 68 right. 68 published, published 68 <laughs> right there's a whole yeah. other yeah plus the novels yeah. and others and the secrets and the published 68 novels um you shared with me before we started recording what's your recipe what's what's the the tip and tool that you think everyone can benefit the most from they'll figure out their own exact spices on the recipe but what recommendation do you have for women to get one or 68 books out into the world? Um, obviously for me, deadlines work very nicely. <laughs> so, but even before I had deadlines, it was setting goals. You have to set a goal. And then, I mean, I follow the great philosopher Nike, just do it. <laughs> you know, that's, that's really, I don't second guess, I don't wonder whether I should be doing something. If I set the goal, I don't look back, I move forward. Um, and then I can't, I love the research. That's, that's for me, the spice is, I, I typically will not write what I know, but what I want to know. Mm. And the, and the research, the learning as, as it's, you know, flowing through my fingers onto the keyboard is the most exciting part for me. That's where the flow comes in. Um, I do like you know revision as well because I recently also got an MFA in creative writing and learned a whole lot about uh, sound and po poetry mm -hmm. and all that. So it's it's become revision has become a lot more fun than it used to be. But I think the initial thing is you have to have a goal. I do advocate outlines to some degree. Even I understand pantsers and and all of that and plotters, but you have to have a sense of direction and a sense of structure. Without that, I think it, you could easily flop around the middle and go I, and start having doubts. I, mean, I, I wrote Dean Koontz's biography and 
uh, you know, he wrote multiple, multiple bestsellers. And, and I remember a, 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 the two years I worked with him, he had doubts. He'd get in the middle of a project and go, oh my God, no one's gonna like this one. Um, it's gonna be the worst one I ever did. And, and yet he'd soldier on and, and just really, you know, he had a goal and he moved into it. And I think that's, that's it. You, you find the project that is, you know, is going to sustain your interest for a long time. You're married to your books. I mean, you, you yeah. have to really fully embrace what you're doing. It doesn't mean it won't change direction in some way as you go along because it probably will and you and you need to let that happen but it but you definitely need to have a sense of momentum toward a goal whether it be a deadline or I'm going to get this done <clears throat> just because I want it there and and I mentioned you know that things happen for people who are prepared that is really true. So you might write a manuscript and nothing is going to happen with it. But then one day yeah. somebody says, can you write a proposal in an hour? We'll go into our meeting. Yes, I can. And that <laughs> happened to me. And I did. And then they said, can you write this book in three months? Yes, I can. And yeah. did. Because yeah. I was always picking up projects moving forward. And those projects just happened to to coincide with that request at that time. Yeah. And so do I ever say no? I guess I say no at this point, but, but um, I think if I can take it on, I, I do it because I never know where it's going to lead. Yeah, I love that. And this idea that e even if something doesn't happen with our, our project on our own timeline, it's either preparing us for something else, it's gonna be exactly what's needed at a different timeline, it doesn't mean that it's a flop. It doesn't mean that we failed. Um, no, well put. I mean, I can definitely vouch for things that I thought were of no use suddenly years later coming to fruition. Well, and it, it's a process, right? The writing process, the publishing process. Um, so curiosity is, is one of your sparks, right? Write what you want to know because that your, your own studiousness is the drive. Um, for other people, it might be write what you teach because mm -hmm. you're so familiar with it and, and it's just another way of expressing what you know so well, the ins and outs of. Um, but I, I think definitely finding the, the container, right? Is it a deadline? Is it your motivation? And then what lights you up? Um, the other thing that you shared, and I think it's really important is the community, finding that community support because writing can feel really, really lonely. Um, and I love to hear that Dean Kuntz, Kuntz doubted himself because yeah. I think doubt, I, I talked to our authors, I was like, oh, you're on that part of, it's a roller coaster, welcome aboard. You're here right now, but guess what? In about five days, you're gonna be <laughs> in a free fall, freaking out, what have I just done? And it just goes like that. Um, and I love to know that everybody goes through that, everybody doubts. And the only way to prove your doubt wrong is just to stay on the train, right? Um, so, but talk about community, because I, I, I think that- this Yeah, I'm, and, I, and some people love writing groups. Uh, I, I'm not that much of a fan of them, um, I guess, because I, I just, I have found them to be sometimes um, cliquish and about bragging rights. So sometimes that, to me, that's not it. So I find one or two good friends who want, are also readers, who will also be honest and not, you know, oh, we love everything you do. Um, I would never, you know, give a manuscript to my mother, for example, um, <clears throat> but my, my sister's a pretty good reader. So I, I think just having, one or two, maybe three people that you can go to, and not just to look at your stuff if they're willing to do that, because they're not, not all my friends are willing to look at anything I write, but um, the support, like when, you're, when you are down or when you are doubting, when you feel like you've made a mistake, um, that you've taken the wrong direction, you've invested a lot of time in something that you think is not going anywhere, it's always good to have the support from people who do know your work and can say no you know no, this this is really the right thing for you to be doing 
And usually when you, I, at least in my life, when, when I sleep on it, I'm ready to go the next day. It doesn't take me long to get out of the slump, but I think some people, it could take longer. Obviously temperaments are all different. Um, and if it does take you a while to get, you know, really, I guess, um, very, very involved in your work and, and really loving it, then I think you need to find the support group that's going to work to help you keep moving on. And I, you know, I hear from a lot of people who, who swear by that. And I think that's really so important. And every time I hear somebody ask for, ask about advice and I hear people say, oh, you know, get the right computer or you know, whatever. I always say, get a friend, get a friend who believes in you. If it's only one friend, that is enough. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's about, I mean, we need some different kinds of support at different parts of the process, right? Um, and, and finding your own recipe. Some people are gonna really need the writers groups at the beginning, the ideas, more advice. Some people are gonna need more like, okay, you're close. Just let me get like that reference point of, yeah, you're actually onto something. I want, I'm curious, I wanna hear more or that cheerleader at the end who's like I can't wait to share about your book on my social media feed or however people you know in yeah, my book club. I think it's important not to get isolated and that's so easy for writers to do especially during the pandemic and yeah. I actually liked it because you know it was it was great but on the other hand too much isolation just cuts you off from from opportunities from yeah you know, lived experience from, from a sense of, there are people who believe in me. And mm -hmm. I think that's, you never should lose sight of that. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, at the very beginning, you said, you know, I have four more at least. So this is just, this is your life, right? You, right one, in, one day I will retire from academia as soon. <laughs> and, that, and then it really will be my life. Um, and even if it means just generating novels to please myself and self-publish them, it won't make any difference because uh, I want to write I, and explore. And that's how I do explore. I, if I go travel, I, I see it all through my character's eyes, whatever character I'm working with at the time, because they shifted right. and changed. But, but I'll go, I remember in Ireland, um, I was working on, a, a, I have a current novel series going and it's my character's Annie Hunter, and she's looking for a missing father who probably committed pseudocide, that is fake suicide. Oh, Everyone else thinks so he fun. killed himself, she doesn't because there was no right. body. So she's in the tower, in Yates's tower in, in Ireland. Mm -hmm. I was, <laughs> and all of a sudden the whole thing was from her point of view, he was here, mm -hmm. he came here. I know he came here. And it, that to me is so exciting. I love seeing places through the eyes of my characters because revelations come that will move a story in a way I would never have anticipated. And that's the real excitement. Even if you are a person who really works without lines, really plotting everything, you have to leave room for those wonderful surprises. Yeah. And uh, that, you know, something like that is always very exciting. That's fantastic. I love it. Um, well, I, for one, can't wait to read Snap. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and thank you so much for, for saying yes to writing um, and, and all the things that you've, the, the pursuits, the curiosities that you've explored. Um, I, I know it's been incredible for the world. And, and I can see when you're talking about writing, it's, it's very obviously a passion that you cannot hide from and escape from so <laughs> or want to or want to um so thank you so much for joining us for all of your writing in the world and um yeah really appreciate Thanks it for having me enjoy the conversation thanks